Hello guys, um, quick video hopefully today. So, um, quick recap of what we tried last time. So, we worked on the screen capturing methods. And if you remember, we tried the image grab from Pillow, the Pi out of GUI method, the MSS method, and the D3D shot method. And if you remember, the performance wasn't so different. And I kept wondering, it's, it, it seemed suspicious to me that they all run in similar time. And so I had a look on the web, looking at the MSS documentation, and they refer to, for the frames per second benchmark, they refer to this naive benchmark. And I don't know if by naive, they mean that it's not effective. But the code was pretty similar to mine with this um, CV2 weight key 25. And I kept wondering, is this 25 milliseconds causing an issue? So I had a look at the documentation of weight key. And it says it waits for a key event that is less than defined milliseconds. And um, yeah, I don't totally yet understand how it works, but I started to wonder if this is actually capping the performance of the screen captures. And uh, yeah, so what I want to do today is revisit the screen capturing, like a part two of screen capturing, because yeah, I'm suspicious about the similar frames per second amongst the methods. And I want to make a test to make, a, you know, tabulate the differences and make a conclusion. Also, looking at the uh, MSS documentation, uh, did I close that? Let's see. Um, yep, it was here. So not only is there a benchmark shown in this documentation where they compare MSS to the pillow method, they also talk about the, um, uh, having a multi-processing helper which is inspired by the TensorFlow object detection introduction project. And so I think this is pretty interesting, right? Because th theoretically we can multi-thread, potentially we can grab more performance. So yeah, I'm interested in MSS, if it can open new doors, but I also want to figure out objectively which method is faster. And if this weight key is causing issues so, I haven't actually run this code yet, so we'll be finding out together. So let's restart this, let's clear all outputs. And so my plan is, first I want to test the weight key using um, only the pillow. So what I've done here is streamlined the code, made a, made a new notebook. Uh, I realize I wrote it in the... Okay. Never mind. This this should be part two, and I think oh no, we are in part two. Sorry, it's pretty late. Um, yeah. So I'm going to test first off the method of screen grabbing with different weight key, uh, weight yeah weight key times, and see if it makes a difference in the results. So what I'm going to do is, let's say, I'm going to do the screenshot, take the screenshot for 120 times measure the total time, so the time before we start the first screenshot all the way till the 128th or 119th, I have to look at the docs if range includes 120 or not, and um, yeah, print out the time and do it for all these uh, five delays. If this gives us a difference, maybe we're on to something. I've applied the same logic to all methods and my intention is to test all methods and print out the frames per second for frames, which is uh, 120 frames. Is it 120 frames? Yeah, maybe we'll, I don't know, 30, if we get like 30 frames per second, that should be around four seconds. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah, let's give it a go. Um, I got uh, Gran Turismo already running. 
we don't actually need to run Gran Turismo, but I want to have something with um, uh, actions on screen. Also later, uh, one more option that's maybe worth revisiting. So it's using the emulator. Uh, emulator has the Slua engine. And there is some options to export screenshots from Lua or from Redux. Um, the issue is how to pass it to the Python environment. Probably you have to use TCP sockets and yeah, it's going to take more effort than what we can cover in this video. Also, I doubt we'll cover in this video, but I, we might start to look at the documentation is I want to find a way to not actually have to use my controller each time because it's annoying. This, this controller goes to sleep and I'm not uh, using the controller that often. And each time I'm having to wake it up, put it back into the correct mode, the Windows X input mode, and yeah, it's a pain. So yeah, let's see um, how it goes. So we need to run this first function to get the screen size. Good. It's just defining a global variable and let's, let's test this one. So we got it grabbing screens. It's annoying that each time it's overlapping that screen, but I mean, already we can see, right, the continue was flashing pretty fast. Now that we're on to one of the other times, perhaps, yeah, I mean, we're getting different results, right? Okay, this, this is pretty interesting, right? Because it means somehow, even though I assumed this code will not actually uh, slow down the main loop, it seems to be slowing down, right? It's getting slower and it's saturated. Okay, because 50, 60 maybe is not so big difference. But yeah, definitely it seems that uh, this delay causes some slowdown. So with one milliseconds, we had five seconds to take the 120 shots with five milliseconds delay, it only increased one. So I'm guessing it cannot perform at one millisecond. So the frame rate is, each frame is taking longer than a millisecond, but it seems as we go up, the, the, the delay itself is starting to add slowdown. And looking at the difference between 50 and 60, there is not much difference. So I think then we saturate that the delay is no longer adding delay, if that makes sense. So yeah, let's see. Um, so I've set all the code to run uh, with the weight key set at one millisecond. And now what we'll do is run everything from here and below, if I can remember how we do that. If not, okay, let's define the functions. Ooh, empty block of code. Let's delete that. Define that function, define that function, define these two functions, the buffer method and the non-buffer method of the 3D shot. And let's see, let's go. So running method one. Let's move this out of the way. It's definitely this continue now here. We can see it flicker almost at the same rate as the main game screen. So I think we're onto something. Okay, we've run all tests. No, we got a crash, but anyway, very promising, right? So we got 25 frame per, frames per second with pillow and 25 frames per second with Pi Auto. 42 frames per second with MSS, which is in line what we're expecting. So MSS is set to be faster. And it's one of the reasons I suppose they included this example code, not this one, sorry, this one, comparing pillow to MSS to prove that MSS is faster. I assume that's what they were intending. And maybe, so there was a comparison here, right? And they definitely show that NumPy 
D3D shot should be faster than pillow uh, three, D3D shot method, I don't know. But yeah, somehow we're starting to get that sort of um, similarity. Um, I wish to compare this method as well, though. Let's see, what can we do for that? Yeah, because there's something about uh, instances. Maybe this is what, let's see, let's see, what can we do? There's something about we're creating, yeah, um, two instances of D3D shots. So I, I'm not entirely sure where that's happening because the screen buffer is meant to be destroyed. Let's let's quickly have a look at the documentation. So destroy nothing instance. Yeah, so it says the describe capture output is defined when creating the user instance. Let's see, where does it say? Okay, Windows Windows only allows one instance, yes. To make sure we fall in line with this with that limitation to avoid issues. You shot class access in Qt and you will always return the existing instance. You always return the instance. So, so even if you create a new create, it will be giving returning the instance of the first one. And Hmm. So I wonder, I wonder if what this actually means that we don't have to run the create, but I have to stop. Is there another function for, for closing instance? No. Let's see what does the close. Okay, so it may, maybe actually the close doesn't exist. I must have gotten reference to the close from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Capture, get less frame. Blah, 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 blah. From bytes. Is there an example called stop? Stop, is that? Yeah, that's what we have, right? Hmm, maybe the, the, the stop is not working. So, ah, oh, maybe this is a bit of a hack, but let's call it twice to see what happens. I don't know. Anyway, this test didn't take so long to run, so let's see. So definitely here, look, the pillow method, it flickers slowly. Okay, now everything is pretty slow. Hmm. Let's see, let's see, MSS should be, no, now we're running MSS, which should be much faster. You know what I reckon it is? I suspect D3D shot is leaving some process running in the background. Because here already the first time we called D3D shot, it's complaining that it's returning the previous existence. And now we got the opposite, right? MSS is slower. <laughs> so let's see. Okay, okay, so we got something. You know what? Let's do this. It's again a bit of a hack, but what the heck? So let's do that. Sorry. That way we can call it separately. 
and let's avoid typing this out again. So what we'll do is here, let's define x1 equals 1, 1, 1, y1 equals 99. I'm just copying the values from the previous run. It's, it's inconvenient to have to use the mouse each time. But obviously these values won't hold true for every monitor and each time around this program and maybe move this window around. So for now, we'll just not touch it. So we'll restart the Python kernel. Good. And yeah, let's run everything from here below. This is going to do this, unfortunately, this test. And here we go, you see. We'll all future so let's see let's see where which box are we running we're running still here so again we got the same thing five nine nine eight next one twelve uh, and last one 13 14 that's my guess let's see 13 there you go okay so then let's run this run this these are just defining the function so they're not actually executing okay now let's run these three let's see in part one which one did we run first in part one we're calling the buffer method first so let's call the buffer method now See, there's something bizarre. I call it twice and it works and it's flashing pretty good. Let's see. And then let's call the non buffer method insanely fast. Okay, good. We got some results to celebrate. Even though there, there is some stuff about the API we don't understand. So, I mean, uh, this one is bizarre. This calling it twice works, but pretty good. I'd say pretty good. So we now know for sure MSS is the fastest way from the classic methods, but this D3D shot using only screenshot methods is pretty fast. It's 53 frames per second, and we saw the continue flash pretty well. Um, what we could do now as well is again it's it's not good coding habits to copy and paste but for this purpose let's create a new block let's run it and rather than running it indefinitely let's do while through and run it forever and let's try to play the game in the screenshot screen so we'll run this and i guess we have to call it so let's call it function. Oh, let's call it play. Again, just to avoid that we lose track of which function. So there we go. And you see what I'm saying. The controller is on sleep, so gotta wake it up. Hold the home button and things flash. And there we go. So yeah, this is this is much higher fidelity right we we have the occasional slowdown i think but definitely playable and i mean 50 frames per second is more than the rendering speed because i think this is rendering at uh, either 30 or 25 probably 25 frames per second because it's the pal version of the game but yeah pretty pleased pretty pleased we got performance up um yeah but Look at that continue. It's it's flashing phenomenally similar to the to the original game. I mean similar. I can't tell the difference. So that's good. Got something to write about. Um yeah, so next I oh yeah, I'm gonna quit this. Brilliant. So definitely we'll be uploading this for reference and uh, tracking history um yeah there you go so during this whole game session it's at 64 frames per second so that means we actually got more frames 
screenshotted than were actually rendered by the emulation or by the, the game engine. Um, yeah, then let's look at this. This is, um, it seems interesting. It seems a way to create a virtual gamepad. So the, the V gamepad library or module says there's a small Python library to emulate Xbox 360 and DualShock 4 gamepads. And this is great because most uh, emulators or pretty much almost any game program on Windows these days expects users to potentially be using one of those two controllers. So yeah, let's see if at least we can get it installed today. So in VS Code, close these terminals, launch, launch a new terminal. It will activate that um, environment. And let's see, Conda install, and what was it called? V Gamepad. Let's hope there's a maintainer for it. If not, we might have to use the pip method and then we might find module, um, versions crashing clashing against each other hopefully not okay already this suggests it's going to have to do some effort to try and get version control let's see i also want to keep this video short so if this is going to take time i'll probably leave it to another time And in the meantime, we can maybe make a memo of the findings. Okay, so it doesn't exist. So probably I'll just try once with pip. And if not, we'll have to go another day. So let's just put this down. So we don't lose it. And yes, you've got to love copying and pasting in Windows from So it's interesting, the buffer method is, is slower than all, and I, I didn't expect that. So, so yeah, I might look into that slightly, how big was our buffer, it was 20 frames. It also kind of makes sense, right? If we're dumping a lot of frames and only using one of them, maybe the slowdown is in filling the buffer. Not true. It definitely has to allocate more memory in RAM. But yeah, I mean, we don't really need a buffer method anyway. And also let's document the delays. So this is not really something to document. It's more to understand that I don't understand how the API, uh, I'm clearly not using the wait key properly, but yeah. So one, five, 20, 50, so one, five, twenty, fifty, and I think the last one is sixty. And these were weight key x FPS. Was that FPS? Yes, it was. No, I think it was the time period for yeah for 120 frames okay so time for 120 frames well, screenshots you should stop calling it screenshots good um yeah um let's see let's try the pip not spend too much time on it just one last attempt so pip install v gamepad is it v oh v gamepad downloading Okay, it's going to install some stuff in Windows. Yeah, kind of, I guess it makes sense because the games, 
in Windows have to detect a gamepad. It's just annoying. I, I don't really like having uh, stuff installed that I haven't uh, investigated. This is, you know, potentially how uh, some stuff is installed. Yeah. <sighs> See more details. The publisher. Yeah, let's go with it. Uh, it's it's not the best. It's not ideal since we don't know where this code came. This is this is one of the cases when it's better to. Um, Built from source code, that way you have a chance to look at the source code. But on the plus side, it seems pretty easy to install. So let's give it a very quick try. Let's give it a very quick try just to check if it's all there and working. So I think there's an example here, for example, for the DS4 method. Let's copy and paste. I have no clue what it will do. Versus just check that it runs. It seems to run. Um, yeah, I have no clue what it's pressing. It's pretending to wake up the controller. So let's just check start. Is there a start button? Press start. Or I got it. Let's rerun Redux. Let's load the our game. Let's run this code, then let's see if it does something, because it says button triangle, button circle. Um, yeah, I don't know how the emulator handles multiple gamepads. Maybe I have to ask the devs on that, but let's give it a twirl. So let's see what happens when we run this code. Mm, sadly, nothing. Just check. Does it recognize? Okay, let's run this again and see if there's anything. Okay, so we definitely got something not working right. So this is my trust controller. I have no idea what that is. It doesn't pretend to do something. And this is where it bugs out. Yeah. So de there's definitely something going on. Maybe, you know, typical Windows got to restart. Well, I'll try next time. Anyway, pretty happy. We got insanely better frames per second. So it can't be bad. Can't be bad. We can call this progress. So thank you guys. I'll upload everything as usual and hopefully be back soon. Type of.